Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Middleport Memorial Gardens for our 2014 Memorial Day tribute. On behalf of Krantz, Boyle, Drabness, American Legion Post 144, and the Auxiliary Unit of Post 144, we thank you for joining us for today's ceremony. My name is Scott Vaz, and I will be your host for today's ceremony. Today's program has been written and constructed by Post 144 Legion Adjutant Ed Vaz. Our purpose here today is to remember all those who made the supreme sacrifice for this nation, the fallen warriors who never came home to their families and friends. On this Memorial Day 2014, we gather to honor the brave men and women who responded to the call of duty and served their country well. It is our personal and public tribute which loudly declares, we will always remember and we will never forget. Today's program is presented by the American Legion Kranz Boyle Drabness Post 144 and its auxiliary unit. The Legion is under the direction of Commander Milt Drum and the auxiliary unit is under the direction of President Pat Gears. The flag being flown in the Memorial Gardens today was donated by the Lewis Welgo family. I ask that you please stand in respect as a color as I ask that you please stand in respect as American Legion Post 144 presents the colors of our country. Commander Drum. Thank you, Commander. Now we ask the Chaplain of American Legion Auxiliary Unit 144, Mrs. Brenda Gustis, for the invocation to today's ceremony. Please stand and remain standing when the Chaplain has finished. Thank you, Scotty. Uh, let's pray. Eternally, eternal God, our Heavenly Father, please protect our sons, daughters, husbands, and mothers who have answered our country's call that they might return safely home. We also remember those who gave their all, remembering with gratitude their courage and devotion to duty. Look up your bereaved servants with mercy. As this day brings them memories of loved ones lost, may it also bring your consolation and the assurance that they are alive now and forever in your living presence. Now, Father, allow us to continue to serve you as one nation under God, and please, God bless America during these difficult times. Amen. Thank you, Brenda. At this time, please welcome Jackie Marcus, Secretary of Auxiliary Unit 144, for the singing of our national anthem. Please to welcome 
Brandon Murray to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Brandon is the son of Dan and Megan Murray of Casca. He is 10 years old and a fourth grade student at St. Clair Elementary. Brandon. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Brandon. Please be seated. Up next, we will have the first of three recitals in today's program. The first reading, the war poem, will be read by Ava Restilla. Ava is the daughter of Chad and Jennifer Fegley of Middleport. She is 10 years old and a fourth grade student at St. Clair Elementary. Ava. Today we are honored and remembered to the many fallen brave who gave their lives in war and battle, their friends and family to save. The men were brave, the men were true, and they believed in what soldiers do. They fought the enemy on land and sea. They fought for freedom and honor and liberty. Today, as we enjoy our freedom, the many, let us never forget the many ones who fought and died, the many who are fighting yet. Let's not forget our soldiers. Let's not forget to pray for the men and women still strong and brave on the battlefields today. Great job, Ava. Thank you. Our second reading, the God Bless America poem, will be read by Miranda Murray. Miranda is the daughter of Dan and Megan Murray of Casca. She is 12 years old and a seventh grade student at St. Clair Elementary. Miranda? God Bless America, America the Beautiful, may it always stay that way. But to keep old glory flying, there's a price that we must pay. For everything worth having demands work and sacrifice, and freedom is a gift from God that commands the highest price. For all our wealth and progress are as worthless as can be without the faith that made us free and keep our country free. Nor can nation hope to live and do itself alone for the problems of our neighbors. Today we become our own. And while it's hard to understand the complexities of war, each one of us must realize that we are fighting for the principles of freedom and the identity of man as a Christian nation we are born to God's plan. And as the land of liberty and a great God's fearing nation, we must protect our honor and fulfill our obligation. So in these times of crisis, let us offer no resistance, in giving help to those who need our strength and our assistance. And the stars and stripes forever will remain a symbol of a rich and mighty nation, but on faith, truth, and love. Another great job. Thank you, Miranda. At this time, I will turn the program over to the Auxiliary Unit 144 President, Pat Gears, for the presentation of our 2014 Poppy Queen. Pat. We had four contestants this year. Our three runner-ups are Cecilia Crampton, Libby Murray, and Kyla Brunitsky. They did a great job this year. And our queen for 2014 is a Abby Leskin. She'll be crowned by her sister, the queen from last year. They did a great job.
Thank you, Pat, and again, great job by all the girls. At this time, I ask Legion Post 144 Vice Commander Ronald Gierst to come to the podium for the introduction of our Memorial Day 2014 guest speaker. Vice Commander Gierst. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for everybody for coming today. <clears throat> I was in charge of uh, picking my speaker. And this young veteran is from Middleport. <clears throat> from the playgrounds of Middleport to the schools of uh, Holy Cross, St. Clair, and Pottsville, and to the enlistment into the Marines. He's one of the few and the proud. He's a Marine. After his <clears throat> discharge, he pursued another goal in life. Again, he is one of the few and the proud. And I'd like to present to you registered nurse, Lenny Seamus. Thank you very much, Ron, for that introduction and uh, for your lifetime of service as well as that of all the veterans present here today. I am truly honored to spend Memorial Day with you today uh, in our beautiful gardens. Memorial Day is a day we as Americans collectively remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice for this nation. Today is in essence a day of mourning. <clears throat> today is also a lot more than that. Today is a day we remember those who answered the call to serve, who fought, who died, and sacrificed for this nation. They did so for something greater than themselves. <clears throat> Many of you know me. I grew up right here in Middleport. I was uh, the kid who forgot to take the trash out and do his homework. <laughs> you know, I used to drive my parents crazy, <clears throat> especially when it came to my studies. Uh, I can only imagine the dread when they had to go to parent-teacher conferences. Um, it wasn't that I lacked intelligence or anything, it just, if it wasn't hunting, fishing, or girls, I just didn't have much interest. Um, however, I always did have a, a great fascination and respect for those in the military. I often read as any book I can get my hands on, on World War I, World War II, Vietnam, Korea. I used to love to hear the veterans speak and hear their stories. I always considered the joining the Marine Corps, but at the time I was still unsure what I wanted to do with my future. Then came the events of September 11, 2001. I can remember it like it was yesterday. I was a sophomore in high school, sitting in second period history class when the first plane flew into the World Trade Center. I remember feeling helpless and angry. I also felt that I should do my part. So with the events of September 11th fresh in my mind, I made the decision to join the United States Marine Corps. In 2004, by the grace of God and to the relief of my parents, I managed to graduate. Uh, shortly thereafter, I attended boot camp at Paris Island, South Carolina. I started my Marine Corps career just at the age of 17. As they say, I was still very wet behind the ears. Let me tell you, that all changed very quickly. Stepping off the bus at Paris Island was a bit of a culture shock. The drill instructors were constantly yelling at you and letting you know that your life would end if you didn't obey their every command. Nothing you ever did was good enough or fast enough. I remember when we were finally allowed to sleep on the second night thinking to myself, why did I ever do this? But as the weeks passed, the drill instructors did their job. They broke us down and molded us into Marines. 13 weeks later, graduation day came. And I, every recruit had the same feeling. We made it. We were finally the Marines. It was an amazing feeling. After boot camp, I next completed infantry school at Camp Geiger, North Carolina. And from there, I was sent to 1st Battalion, 2nd Marines. When I got to my unit, I was what we called a boot, which means a Marine fresh out of boot camp. Um, 
we were pretty much worse than scum, and uh, our senior Marines at the time let us know that every day. I quickly realized if I was going to make it in my platoon, I had to earn the respect and trust of my fellow Marines. Shortly after my arrival at 1st Battalion, 2nd Marines, at the age of 19, I found myself headed to Iraq. I must admit, I was scared. I wondered how I would react. Would I be able to perform when the time came, or would I freeze up? There was one thing, though, that I knew for certain, and that was I did not want to let my fellow Marines down. You see, we were more than just friends. We were brothers. We saw each other at our best and our worst. We sacrificed and suffered together. Any one of them would have given their life for me, and I owe those brave men a debt of gratitude for getting me home unscathed from my first deployment. In 2007, I would again deploy to Iraq, this time as a squad leader. I was in charge of leading 12 Marines and ensuring they were ready to tackle any combat situation that may arise. My leadership mantra was that, to never ask my Marines to do anything I was not willing to do myself. I drew upon my past experiences and lessons taught to me from my senior Marines, and thankfully I was able to bring all my men home safely from a tough tour. In 2008, I would leave the Marine Corps. It was the toughest decision of my life. The first few months were rough, I admit that. I felt a tremendous amount of anxiety about what my future would hold. As I started school, all I could think about was how rough high school was for me. As the weeks passed though, I realized I wasn't the same 16 year old kid I was in high school. I felt focused and driven to succeed. And four years later, I graduated with distinction from Penn State University. I can remember during my first job interview, I was uh, interviewing for a position at Hershey Medical Center, uh, a very competitive program. Uh, there was only about 60 positions for upward of thousands of applicants. I recall my interview asking me about my resume, specifically the section about my time as an infantryman. You know, uh, being qualified on the, a grenade launcher doesn't really help me much in nursing. But I proceeded to tell her about all the intangible things I got from the Marine Corps. Things like teamwork, adaptability, and leadership. They were very impressed, and a few weeks later I found out I got one of the coveted positions. Looking, at the, looking back at the way things turned out, I gotta say, I'm truly blessed. And I owe a large part of my success to my time in the service. Because of them, I know I can tackle any challenge life throws at me. You know, I have to say one thing though. Uh, during my time in the Marine Corps, I was certainly never a hero. But I had the privilege to serve alongside many. <clears throat> I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about a few of them. In January 2006, Lance Corporal Ryan McCurdy and Corporal Clifton Trotter were providing security on a road in Fallujah, Iraq, when an enemy sniper had targeted them. Corporal Trotter was shot in the neck and seriously wounded. In a heroic move, Lance Corporal McCurdy left his position and pulled Trotter safety behind a dirt berm. <clears throat> Now more exposed to the enemy sniper fire, Lance Corporal McCurdy was mortally wounded by that sniper. Corporal Trotter would recover from his wounds and is alive today and has a two-year-old son that he named Ryan after the guy who saved him. On February 6, 2006, Corporal Orver Orville Horena and Lance Corporal David Parr and PFC Jacob Spann were tragically killed when their Humvee was hit by an improvised explosive device in al Heed, Iraq. Corporal Verena will be remembered as a devoted husband. You know, he, we could be patrolling for eight hours, come back, he'd have to write an after-action report, and he'd still write his wife every day, no matter what. Lance Corporal Parr was a serious Marine and one heck of a comedian. He was the kind of guy that could make you laugh in the worst situation. <clears throat> PFC Span was a Russian immigrant who was hoping to become a U.S. citizen through his service as a Marine. He was brave and often volunteered to fill as a gunner on many of the patrols. The last one I want to tell you about is the hardest for me to talk about. It's my friend, Daniel Angus. Dan gave his life at age 28 after his squad was ambushed. 
They were taking heavy fire from automatic weapons, rocket propelled grenades, and mortars. In an attempt to break the ambush, they made a daring assault on an enemy-held compound. The first man in the compound was PSC Timothy Poole. As he stepped through the entrance, he triggered a, a hidden explosive device that badly wounded him. Dan, without regard to himself, jumped up and ran to pull that injured Marine to safety when he, when he also triggered an explosive device. Both Dan and PFC Poole would perish from that blast. Dan left behind a young wife and his two-year-old daughter, Caitlin. He was a, a great guy. He, he always had your back no matter what. Um, he loved the outdoors and loved his family, and I miss him every day. These are just a few of the heroes I had the privilege to get to know. There are thousands of similar stories throughout our history about brave men and women that made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms. We enjoy it today. These men and women are the real heroes of this country. On this Memorial Day, as you spend time with your loved ones, I ask you not to forget my friends and all those who paid so costly a price for our freedom. Let us honor them by making a promise that from this day on, we try to live our lives worthy of the sacrifice they made. I would like to close by saying thank you all for attending the ceremony and showing your support for our veterans. I know I speak for a grateful community and nation in saying thank you to all the fine men and women present here today who proudly serve. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, Lynn. A wonderful job. And now, let us begin the solemn parts of our ceremony. The time to honor the brave men and women who gave their lives so that we may be free. They fought for us, and they, for us they fell. Now we do them honor. Because of them, our lives are free. Because of them, our nation lives. We begin with the chaplain of American Legion Post 144, Jim McHale, leading us with the memorial prayer. Chaplain. Uncover. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, grant that we may approach this ceremony with clean hearts. Keep us ever mindful of our obligation to those that have made the supreme sacrifice for our country and our noble purpose. We humbly pray that your love may find its way into the hearts and souls of all men. The day small, never again seek occasion of conflict, but live in peace and harmony, laboring for the broader benefits of mankind. You have blessed us with the opportunity to serve our country in our hour of need. We pray that you will grant us continued opportunities to serve in time of peace as they served in time of war. Bless the American Legion and Auxiliary and all veteran groups and these people assembled here that together we may advance the sacred cause of justice, freedom, and democracy, that together they may serve you and our country in undivided loyalty. Amen. Cover. Thank you, Chaplain. And now our POW MIA Remembrance. Today, there are still more than 83,000 American troops missing in action. That includes some 73,681 from World War II, 7,947 from the Korean War, 126 during the Cold War, 1,657 from the Vietnam War, and countless others from Iraq and other past and current conflicts. 
The American Legion family is dedicated to ensuring that American POW MIAs be honored and recognized, not just memorialized. An important way all Legion family members create awareness and remembrance is by conducting POW MIA remembrance services. At this time, I ask Commander Milt Drum and Vice Commander Ron Gears to conduct our POW MIA remembrance service. currently serving in the uniformed services of the United States are ever mindful that the sweetness of enduring peace has always been tainted by the bitterness of personal sacrifice. We are compelled to never forget that while we enjoy our daily pleasures, there are others who have endured and may still be enduring the agonies of pain, deprivation, and imprisonment. Before we begin our activities, we pause to recognize our prisoners of war and those missing in action. We call your attention to the small table, which occupies a place of dignity and honor. It is set for one, symbolizing the fact that members of our armed forces are missing from our ranks. They are referred to as POW MIAs. We call them comrades. They are unable to be with their loved ones and family, so we join together to pay humble tribute to them and to bear witness to their continued absence. The table is small symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his or her suppressors. The tablecloth is white, symbolic of the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. The single rose in the vase signifies the blood they may have shed in sacrifice to ensure the freedom of our beloved United States of America. This rose also reminds us of the family and friends of our missing comrades who keep faith while awaiting their return. The red ribbon on the base represents the red ribbon worn on the lapels of the thousands who demand with unyielding determination a proper account of our comrades who are not among us. The slice of lemon on the plate reminds us of their bitter fate. The salt sprinkled on the plate reminds us of the countless fallen tears of families as they wait. The glass is inverted. They cannot toast, toast with us at this time. The chair is empty. They are not here. The candle is reminiscent of the light of hope which lives in our hearts to illuminate their way home, away from their captors, to the open arms of a great nation. The American flag reminds us that many of them may never return and have paid the supreme sacrifice to ensure our freedom. Let us pray to the Supreme Commander that all of our comrades will soon be back within our ranks. Let us remember and never forget their sacrifice. May God forever watch over them and protect them and their families. Thank you, Commander Drum and Vice Commander Gears. Up next, we will have the helmet liner presentation.
At this time, I call upon Mr. Ted Nazar, a World War II veteran, a Pearl Harbor survivor, and a 65-year continuous member of Post 144. Mr. Nazar will supervise as Frank Crampton places the helmet liner in remembrance of your comrade's service to their country. Fred, and thank you, Ted. <laughs> thank you, Frank. I'm sorry. Thank you, Ted. <laughs> Next, we will place four memorial wreaths in front of each monument of our fallen comrades. Placing the wreaths this year are Mary Nazar, a life member and past president of Auxiliary Unit 144, Frank Kutosh, a past commander, commander of the Kambola Legion. Frank Crampton, past commander of Middleport Post 144, and Joe Blickley, a past commander of Middleport Post 144. Please place the memorial wreaths. May these wreaths be a token of our enduring memory. The flowers may wither, but the memory that they are a symbol of will endure until the end of time. Thank you all. At this time, I bring your attention to the seven small American Legion flags in the front of the podium. They represent the seven members of Post 144 that have passed since Memorial Day 2013. They are Albert Dallator, Reverend John Druther, John Plachko, Bernard Schaefer, Louis Welgo, Joseph Jakubowski, John Jakubowski. May they rest in peace. Now it is time to honor by name those who paid the supreme sacrifice from our surrounding communities. Please remain standing and with bowed heads as we re read the names of those we lost from Tuscarora, Mary D, Brockton, Casca, Cambola, and Middleport. The fallen soldiers from Tuscarora, John J. Baddock, John P. Chinchar, John P. Fedock, Paul P. Kuhn, 
Albert Z. Petrusky, Thomas J. McGoldrick, George Tarkanish, those who paid the supreme sacrifice for Mary D. Michael Haidu Sr. Edward J. Kupitz. John M. Kupitz. Alexander Legowitz. Walter McLaughlin. Michael Rudy. Charles Sadusky. Stanley Sadusky. Michael Shatik. Daniel Snyder, Edward E. Stillwagner, John M. Toth, Frank Vitkoski. From Brockton, we lost Daniel Fabritz, Louis Krantz, Joseph Costin, John Pillar, Casca's Pride, Barney Boyle, John Jukas. Those who gave their all from Kambola. John Kozlowski. Joseph Lucas. Edward Rosalinski. James J. Devlin. Scott E. Drum. William J. Casper. Sheridan A. Mackey. Michael V. Stein. James Ketrick. John A. Osilis and those who fell from Middleport. Edward Bartish, Alfred Drabness, Clement Drabness, Edward Drabness, Stephen Hromiak, John Petrush, John Reed, Peter Chappella, Richard Stevens, William Wallakovich. God bless the man, God bless America. Commander, salute the dead. At this time, please welcome Bailey Noggle to the podium, who will lead us in the singing of God Bless America. Bailey is the daughter of Jim and Marilyn Noggle of Middleport. She is 16 years old and a sophomore at Pottsville Area High School. Bailey.
Thank you, Bailey. You may be seated. For our third recital, In Flounder's Fields, it will be read by Autumn Tarkanish. Autumn is the daughter of Michael and Pam Tarkanish of Middleport. She is 14 years old and, a, and an eighth grade student in the St. Clair School District. Autumn. In Flounder's Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scars heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and more loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye breathe break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Thank you, Adam. Once again, we call upon Auxiliary Unit 144 Chaplain Brenda Gustis to deliver the benediction for today's ceremony. Brenda. Thank you, Scotty. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of all victories, we thank thee for the opportunities which abide in our land, for thy guidance in the hour of peril, and thy tender love in times of need. Help us to remember with reverence the, the valor and devotion of our departed comrades. O oh God, teach us to honor our veterans by ever cherishing the ideals for which we fought. Keep us steadfast in the cause of human rights and liberties, of law and order, and true Americanism. Give us the power to see and the will to do the right. Grant that we may preserve the high ideal for which our comrades died. May, may thy merciful blessings rest upon those they left behind. Keep us forever firm in righteousness, humble of heart, and unselfish in purpose. Amen. Thank you, Brenda. Again, you may be seated. Before our program concludes today, we must say a special thank you to the members of the Middleport Community Organization, whose hard work and dedication have helped to make the Memorial Gardens look as beautiful as they do. What a wonderful job everyone involved did in pre preparation for today's festivities. festivities. On behalf of American Legion Post 144 and its auxiliary unit, we say thank you. In closing, we'd like to thank all those who have participated in today's ceremony. Legion members, auxiliary members, guest speaker, the young people for their ex excellent readings, our singers Jackie and Bailey, thank you all for a job well done. Finally, we ask that not just today, but every day, you keep in your thoughts and your prayers all those that have served and those that are currently serving throughout the world. We pray that they come home safe and sound, and we pray that they come home sooner rather than later. And when you see a veteran, be sure to say thank you, for it is because of them that we are able to enjoy the freedoms that we have today. To conclude today's program, I call upon Commander Drum. Commander, retire the POW flag. Commander, retire the colors of our country.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our 2014 Memorial Day program. On behalf of everyone from American Legion Post 144, I thank you for joining us today and invite everyone to join us at our post home for food and drink. And we wish everyone a happy and safe Memorial Day. Thank you and God bless America.